I'd like to introduce you to the plants in our pollinator garden. These plants were chosen due to their many benefits to pollinators and they are all native to this area. No pesticides are used here to ensure the food that these plants provide to wildlife is non-toxic and as healthy as possible. It's a bit early in the season for any blooms as of yet and some newer plants are still establishing themselves. Um, but we encourage you to periodically stroll down the west end of the parking lot over the next few months so you can see the garden in its full glory. Prairie Smoke has pink to reddish purple buds that turn into feathery plumes from May to June. They look kind of like troll hair. As an early flowering plant, this is an, an important food source for insects emerging from hibernation. This is common milkweed. Milkweeds are the only plant on which the monarch butterfly will lay eggs, and monarch caterpillars feed exclusively on its leaves. It attracts over 40 species of butterflies. There are actually several kinds of milkweed, and this one is butterfly weed. It blooms in the summer with clusters of flowers in just the cheeriest shade of orange, and it's also a host plant for monarchs. Besides the monarch, another botanically monogamous butterfly is the endangered Carner Blue, and she will only lay her eggs on wild lupine. Any gardener who has this plant shouldn't cut it down in the fall because the butterfly's eggs remain on it over the whole winter. Wild lupine has beautiful blue-purple flowers from May to midsummer, and these leaves are amazing. If they catch a raindrop just right, they make it look like quicksilver or a diamond. Check it out. Pearly Everlasting has flowers that look like little papery buttons, and it is a larval host plant for the American Painted Lady Butterfly. It attracts other butterflies, and bees too, and one of them, the wool carter bee, will gather these fine hairs from the leaves and create little pillows to line the nest cavities for their babies. Cardinal flower attracts ruby-throated hummingbirds, various swallowtail butterflies, and small bees and bumblebees. Dense Blazing Star and Bee Balm bloom July to September, and both will attract butterflies, skippers, bees, hummingbirds, and even hummingbird moths. Ironweed blooms from July to October, so the nectar attracts late summer butterflies like the Great Spangled Fertillery, Monarch, and the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. At least 22 butterfly species are attracted to purple coneflower, and in autumn, the seeds will bring in birds like goldfinches and juncos. This is goldenrod, and it's not the cause of hay fever. That's ragweed. But instead, it's a critical autumn food source to pollinators, and monarchs stock up on this nectar for their long migration to Mexico. Goldenrod is the number one top-ranked genus for hosting caterpillars that feed our breeding birds and fall migrants. Gardeners would also not want to cut this down for the winter because insects that birds feed upon lay their eggs in the stems for a spring birth. If you are interested in gardening yourself, we have an extensive collection of gardening books, some of which focus on growing for pollinators in particular. We also welcome you to drop by our seed library. We don't stock too many of the plants from our pollinator garden here, though, because the seeds of those plants require a period of winter-like conditions before they will sprout. However, we have a specially curated pollinator drawer, which is chock full of plants that will help feed our wonderful pollinators.